Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Today, we have so many questions to answer. First of all, who's going to be good out of the pen this year? Who had a great spring training and who might make a resurgence? We'll go over all these questions and a ton more on today's episode. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. But the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So, just before we start getting into everything, we wanted to mention to you guys. We put out episodes every single day. You, A lot of you guys watch these episodes pretty consistently, regularly. Drop a subscribe for us. It helps us out a ton. It puts our videos right at the top of your feed. Hopefully that you guys will get all this information coming at you every single day heading into the start of the regular season. Um, yeah, it really helps us out. We'd appreciate it. So make, you, make sure you guys subscribe. You also can look me up on uh, X or Twitter, at Braden Fabio Wasco, Carter, Carter First Two. Uh, also, our Instagram page and TikTok on Locked On Blue Jays. Uh, we'll be posting a bunch of content there throughout the sort of start of the season, as well as we have the big day tomorrow, opening day. Everybody's going to be ready to go. And after the final pitch of the game, we will be live on YouTube going over sort of our just immediate reactions. Have a little bit of fun with you guys, answer some questions, whatever you guys want to say. The stream will be open. Not sure how we're going to how long we're going to run it, but. Uh, yeah, as long as you guys are there and enjoying it, we might just keep it rolling. Have a good night with it. Um, the Blue Jays did, of course, drop that 4-3 to three defeat against the Pirates yesterday. Uh, today, of course, no game. Or, sorry, no game yesterday. Yeah, you're talking about the yeah, Monday game. The Monday Pirates, game, yeah. Pirates, they lost 4-3. to three. Lost no the Pirates on, on Monday. No game today and uh, or t- yesterday. And today, no game as well, heading into opening day on Thursday. Uh, Carter, I know we've got like a ton of stuff to go over here. We have questions, just a ridiculous amount of questions. I think you have like 10, I have eight or nine. We are, we got tons to get into, but first of all, we did want to throw, uh, you know, give everybody an update on how the fantasy hockey playoffs are going for us. Since it is me and you in the finals, uh, I'm up what 18, 18 and a half to about two and a half right now. Yeah. 18.8 to 2.8. You had six guys go. I had two guys go. One of them was the Canucks goalie, unfortunately for me and you, I guess, because the Canucks did end up losing. But you had Cam Talbot, so a little bit interesting that you had uh, some money in the rivals uh, pot there. But I mean, you know, you'll, you'll sacrifice the Canucks set success for fantasy, and I won't because I'm a true Canucks fan, and you just you like fantasy more than the Canucks, so it is what it is. But uh, yeah, so far you are up, but we'll have to see what happens. It's only the first day. A lot crazier things have happened. A 15 point deficit's not that much, so we'll see. No. What no, I said, honestly, going into Sunday, you you almost probably have to have a 20-point lead. I don't think there's a ton of games on Sunday, but you almost have to have a 20-point lead going into that day. Otherwise, yeah, it's everything's still up in the air. So, yeah, 15 points isn't um, isn't much. Uh, Carter, you know what? Uh, I don't know if you want to get started, but uh, I have one here that I, that I was sort of teasing yesterday a little bit that maybe I'll throw out first because uh, it's not really like a huge in-depth anything. But... Uh, when do you think, or do you think that Joey Votto will join the MLB club? With Joey Votto, this situation is very interesting. Obviously, the injury is a setback. I think that's what lost him the competition to Daniel Vogelbach, even though Daniel Vogelbach probably had the upper hand, considering he was here at the start of spring training. With Joey Votto, I don't think they would have signed him for no reason. But again, he does have to earn his way up to this major league roster with what Daniel Vogelback did in spring training. That's exactly what you signed him for. He was hitting home runs. He was hitting for power from the left side. So with Joey Votto, he's the same type of player. He's going to be the bench bat, going to be a guy that hits for power. So it's going to be based off of how he does in uh, AAA, the start of the season. I'm not expecting Joey Votto, honestly, until July. I think there's going to be two months straight of no Joey Votto. I think he's going to take a little bit of a step back earlier in the uh, the season for AAA. And then eventually he'll work his way up. Maybe he'll ha- get hot and then that's when we'll call him up. Because I know Joey Votto does have options. So that they're not going to be, there's not too much pressure to have him on the major league squad right away. But I'm going to say for a concrete date, I'll go with July. Let's go with the 4th of July. Screw it. We'll go with uh, on the American day. Well, 4th of July, you will see Joey Votto make his Blue Jays appearance. 
Okay. I don't mind that. I think that's like pretty much with in line with what I had a little bit is I don't necessarily think that he's going to, yes, we're not going to see him anytime soon, but I do think that he will find his way into this lineup, a guy with playoff experience that if we can start to get him rolling into this lineup, heading into playoffs, I think ideally that's the situation because he's a big player and big players are made for big moments. So a little bit of the uh, miracle there speech. Uh, why not throw that in? Uh, yeah, I'll send it to you for the for the next one. I don't like, you know, I think the Joey Votto thing was just sort of an interesting piece that I had with, you know, the injury and everything else. So, All right, so I'm going to start with more of a general question because as the day we are recording this, we are one day away. Well, two days away as we're recording this. When it comes out, we'll be one day away from opening, opening day. I'm so excited. I know we've talked about this a lot on the podcast. I just want to know specifically – what is one thing that you're the most excited for in this upcoming season? Is it to see Vladdy just launch home runs? Is it to see Kevin Gosman absolutely make people look silly at the plate? Is it to see John Schneider maybe make some dumb decisions? Anything like that could be Yusei Kikuchi maybe coming in for a pitch run uh, spot so somewhere through the season. Maybe Kirk somehow steals a soul, steals a base, whatever it is. What's your the moment you're looking forward to the most for this Blue Jays season? You know what? Uh, where baseball is made for me is is ninth innings. That's it's the most exciting part of the game, right? It's it's your closer, Jordan Romano, against some of the best guys in the league, and or it's your bats against one of the best pitchers in the league, right? And I think moments like that, I always go back to the uh, the Batista home. Well, not the same situation, but those big home runs and big moments, those big hits, the ones that make you be on the edge of your seat. So I think. Um, I want to see a little bit of clutch out of Vladdy. So I'm going to say at some point this year, when Vladdy hits either a game winning home run or a game tying home run, something like that. Um, every season, that's how I go into it thinking I, I, I live for the big moments. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say a Vladdy game winning home run. Yeah. I love that answer. I love the uh, Jordan Romano walkout song. We won't get it at the start of the season, unfortunately, but it's so electric just fires everyone up. And then just the Jordan Romano specialty, you know, let two player runners on, usually second and first, usually there's a walk and a single in there. And then that's when you start your outing. You get the fans on their seats a little bit, and that's how they roll. I love to see that. I love the clutch moments as well. I think that's why that's why I fell in love with the game. It's all the clutch moments. The way you feel after you do something unbelievable in sports is just, it's nothing to compare to any other feeling in the world. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we it's, it's hilarious to think about, but... Uh... This year in, in slow pitch, uh, we had uh, one of our buddies walk off a game. And it was that same feeling. It's, it doesn't matter what level of baseball you play or, or watch. Those those big moments, they they still get you. They still give me goosebumps no matter what sport it is, no matter what level. We were watching um, uh, Junior B hockey the other night. And uh, my brother scored the game-winning goal in overtime. Same sort of feeling. It's those goosebumps that go down your arm. It's just an electric moment. So if we can get a bit of those, uh, bit of those moments from the Jays this year, I think that just makes the whole year way more exciting. 100%. We're living for the clutch moments. Hopefully the Jays don't have too many of them. Hopefully they're just rolling over teams for the entirety of the season. I would like to see uh, some division games especially. Hopefully get some blowouts there because it wasn't too kind of the Blue Jays last season. Well, I'll give it back to you for uh, one of your questions. Yeah, so uh, I, this is sort of has to do, we talk a lot about David Schneider, a lot about Ernie Clement. Um, do David Schneider and Ernie Clement stay on the MLB team all season long? See, I have in my bold predictions, I have Ernie Clement as being an everyday player. So I don't want to contradict myself. With David Schneider, I think there's more of a reality, actually, that he does get sent down. Because he is such a boomer bust player. You saw last season, like setting records off the start. But then guys kind of figured him out, realized he couldn't hit the high fastball. Then he had a horrible uh, September, October. So it depends on how he makes that transition. This spring training hasn't fared amazing for David Schneider, but he has looked good in left field. That catch he made, I think it was the second last spring training game. Unbelievable. I don't know if you see the consistency from David Schneider, but the thing is, is like, who do you, who do you pull up for David Schneider? So I'm going to go with, I think, the safe answer, I guess, and say no. You probably don't see Ernie and David Schneider both in the major leagues the entirety of the season. I think right now, I, I would say David Schneider's all, the biggest on the fence. I think Ernie's worked his way up to uh, the major league roster in spring training with his performance and his performance when he was in for Bo Bichette. So I'm going to say no, and I'm going to say if anyone gets sent down, it's going to be David Schneider over Ernie Clement. Yeah, and I mean, I, I obviously would hate to see that. I'm, I'm a... David Schneider fanboy right now. Um, but 
yeah, I think that's that's the most realistic. I, I don't know if Ernie's going to keep up this amazing stretch of baseball that he's playing either. Um, I, they're young guys. I'm, I'm not 100% like they're going to be, you know, all-stars or whatever this season. I, I pray to God that they do really well. Um, but I think both of them have the chance of being sent down. But 100%, I think you're right in the thought of who comes up for them then. And I think that's what's interesting. And are we left a little bit out to dry if one of those or both of those two guys don't pan out for us this year? It's it's interesting. And I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. The only guy that I can kind of think of that would make an impact on this team, I don't even really see Nathan Lucas coming up. It would be Spencer Horwitz for me. Yeah. A first baseman, a guy, again, he would just be a bench bat. Uh, I, I don't really see a fit for him here. He'd have to be absolutely raking in uh, AAA. Maybe you see Elvis Martinez, but again, didn't have a good spring training. Maybe you don't want to start the clock on him. I think it's going to be an interesting thing to monitor, and I don't think there's going to be a move for a while for the Toronto Blue Jays in terms of roster moves, especially for the position players. The bullpen's completely different, and depending on injuries, things can happen. But yeah, I think it's going to be Davis. I think the, the bench is pretty locked in right now. And other than like Joey Votto at some point throughout the season, but I think he would come up for Vogelback compared to Davis Schneider or Ernie. But it's going to be interesting throughout the season. I hope that we can keep our bench together and not switch things up too much. Because I do like keeping all the boys together. You get uh, you get everyone in the same mindset in the dugout. Everyone's playing for each other. I don't like switching that up too much. 100% agree. Yeah, I, you hit the nail on the head and hopefully hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully these guys will have a good ear and we won't even have to have this discussion. Um, but that's not always how baseball works. We do want to get into a ton of more questions. We barely scratched the surface here, um, but we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Today's episode sponsor is Prize Picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's tournament season or the fight for the playoff home court there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments for this time of the year get in on the excitement with prize picks america's number one fantasy sports app and you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash to test your skills on prize picks this season it's the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports you can easily turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with just a few taps as for my prize picks picks today again i'm gonna roll with the trend of my fantasy team i need to rely on my boys i need to be hyping up my boys to get this win against Braden this week so I have Makar over points. I have Adam Fox over points. And then I also have Sebastian Ajo and Jake Gensel. Sebastian Ajo is over 1.5 points, so I need two out of him. Really going in on that one. And Jake Gensel is only a point five. I think that one's pretty locked, honestly, with how they've been playing together. Hopefully my fantasy boys can get it done. So if you guys want to join in on the prize picks, download the app today and use code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. That's code locked on MLB for a first deposit matchup to $100. Just wanted to, before we get back into it, say again, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out. We're trying to compete with a couple other, you know, Blue Jays podcasts. We have a lot of respect for the other ones. Uh, you know, we grew up listening to some of them or came into the game listening to a few of them, you know, but uh, but we're still, you know, it's, it's that nice competition that we're always looking for. Uh, so, you know, we want to take this to the next level and you guys help us out by, you know, subscribing, liking the videos, commenting, all of that. And that's why I think we're going to have so much fun on this live show on Thursday. Uh, so the episode will come out for before the game. So you guys can dial into the episode right first thing in the morning on wherever you get your podcast and YouTube. But then after the game, we will have our live show right after. It's going to be a blast. We're going to have so much fun. But Carter, we have more questions to get into, and I'm not sure if it's your turn or my turn, but I'll just let you go. I'll take this one. I want to ask uh, about the pitching uh, situation we have going on here. I uh, did have uh, rank the five starting pitchers, but I'm going to throw in Alec Manoa. So I'm going to get you to rank the six starting pitchers on this team. And it's not based off what they've done previously. I want it to be based off of this season. Who you think is going to be the best pitcher, the most important pitcher of this team this season for 2024? Okay. Well, I think the top three are pretty much a lock. Uh, I think you got to go. Uh, Kevin Gosman, Jose Barrios, Chris Bassett. Then I'm going to go Yusei Kikuchi. Then I'm going to go Bowden Francis. I'm, I'm debating on those two. I think Bowden might have a really good year and might overtake Kikuchi for that fourth spot. Or, you know, it, it'd be pretty similar anyway. Um, but then, of course, coming at uh, the dead last here, uh, and I, it's just because he's given me no confidence, you know, and that's Alec Manoa. There. There's been no point in this past year and a half that we've been going through this problem with Alec Manoa. Have I again felt good about him? Hey, I felt good about him a little bit before the offseason or the uh, spring training started. 
then he started pitching and that all went away. So I don't know if, uh, if you're in the same boat with me with those, I don't maybe have a little bit of differing opinion. No, I feel like you had uh, the most general answer, a little bit, a little bit of a cop out from you there. Oh, but I mean, okay. I think that's uh that is fair. I think that's going to be the most general one. Uh, with Alec Manoa, I want to do one more extension because I figured you'd have him at, have him at six. Would you rather have Mitch White pitch or Alec Manoa to start the season? God, that is <laughs> that's a brutal question. Oh my goodness! It sucks that we have to ask it because it's not that black and white, unfortunately. So I I hate to say this, but again, I have no reason to trust Alec Manoa. I I would rather Mitch White go out there and throw three innings, hand it over to Richards in the bullpen or something for a long relief outing. I'm more comfortable with that than I am with Manoa because at that point you get, you got to just pray that he has a good outing. And I think we've done a lot of praying for Alec Manoa lately and it hasn't come, you know, to fruition. So I'm going I'm, Mitch White. I'm actually on board with you there with that, because with Mitch White, I think you could plan around it a little bit better. You know, you're not going to probably get five, six innings on Mitch White. You're going to do exactly what you said. You're going to get three, four innings and you're going to have Trevor Richards lined up. You're like, you're going in after Mitch White. Alec Manoa, there's a lot more uncertainty. Like you might be able to get six innings out of Alec Manoa. It's a high chance you get two innings out of Alec Manoa with six walks. So I'm in for Mitch White. My starting rotations is a little bit different than yours, though, for that. The most five, the top five impactful players. So I say on my bold takes, Kevin Gosman, Cy Young, gotta go number one there. Jose Barrios and Chris Bassett are so similar for me. Yeah. They they are very, they're very like it's the same pitcher. They give you length. They're not going to get a crazy amount of strikeouts most of the time. They're not throwing crazy hard, but they're efficient. So I'm going to switch it up, and I'm going to go Chris Bassett over Jose Brios. I think that they're going to be very close. Last season, the numbers were very close down the stretch as well. And here's another one where I'm going to flip it. I'm not as high on Yusei Kikuchi this year. I think that he had I just he overachieved last year. I think he's still going to be serviceable, like for sure. I don't think it's going to be as good as last season. So that's why I'm on the Bound Francis train. I think I have him at number four. I've seen enough from spring training and last season when he had to pitch from the bullpen. This guy wants it. You can tell he's pinning his ears back. He's battling for his job and he's earned it. He's not going to let it slip now. He's going to have the number four spot. That leaves Yusuke Kikuchi at five and then Alec Manoa if he even pitches this season. That is my number six. You know what? I really, I, I don't mind that. And, that. and that's exactly where I was uh, in my thinking. Cause I mean, we, it's not like we went into this, you know, having these questions all laid out or anything. We just sort of came in and we're firing about what we think. Um, Chris Bassett and Jose Barrios, like you said, are very, very similar. And I definitely could see the hound having a better season. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I think, I think it's very tight and I think it's a coin flip. And then for Kikuchi, I don't think we're going to see what we saw last year. But even if he's slightly worse, I, I think you're very happy with that performance. And and Bowden, to me, is just not proven enough yet for me to put him over Kikuchi. Um, but again, I think it could be very close between those two as well. So, I, yeah, I think I think both of those are very serviceable answers. I think if somebody throws anybody over Kevin Gosman, then I'll be questioning their Blue Jays knowledge a little bit. Um, but, you know, whatever. Everybody's got an opinion. Yeah, I mean, Jose Brios is a dog. He can go out and have an unbelievable year. He's gonna be, He would be a number one on a lot of teams. Chris Bassett's criminally underrated. This guy's got a million pitches. It's tough to figure out. So that's why I have my rankings the way it is. I think they can definitely change. I honestly can see Jose Brios being the best pitcher on the Blue Jays this season just based off how good he is. So I don't think it's that Kevin Gosman has a bad year. I think it's just Jose Brios is so good that there is more of a debate. Okay. I, I don't, I don't hate that. I mean, Hey, if we can keep getting more and better and better pitching performances out of all these guys, I, I don't think anybody would complain. Um, the next one I want to go into, this one's a little bit, you know, down the line, whatever, but it's the start of the season. I'm getting excited. Do the blue Jays make the playoffs? Oh, I'm hammering. Yes, absolutely. They make the playoffs. This team won 89 win or 89 games with a great starting rotation, great bullpen, but a, a horrible offense. Let's just say that. It was not good at all. 26 home runs was the home run leader on this team with how good this team was on paper. Nobody expected that. That was not good enough. Uh, I think the pitching will regress. A lot of guys did have really good years, but God forbid if we just get one of the four guys, like Vladdy, Kirk, Varsho, Springer, if someone can produce, I think that gives us another couple wins right there. So I had them at 89 again, just because I think the hitting is going to bump up a little bit and the pitching is going to regress a little bit, but hundred percent they're making the playoffs. No questions asked for me there. 
Yep, I'm with you. I again, like uh, in our preview that we did, I had them at 90 wins. Um, so I think that's a staple playoff making team right there. So yeah, I'm with you. Hammering, hammering the in the playoffs. So if you guys want to, you know, go bet on FanDuel or anything else, you know, I would say hammer that the Jays are a playoff team. And speaking of FanDuel and things that you can bet on, that leads me into my next question. And this one we haven't talked about on the podcast at all. I think the line is set at seven and a half. I'm not 100% sure though. I'm going to have to fact check that on FanDuel. But how many, or sorry, how long is the longest winning streak for the Toronto Blue Jays this season? Ooh. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember from last season. I believe it was six or seven. We didn't go on a crazy big run. I know in yeah. previous years we've had 11s, 12s, stuff like that. I believe the line is seven and a half. I'm try, I can try to pull it up maybe as a uh, you know what up this question. Yeah, here. you know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with. I'll go with six. I'll go with six, just in the fact that this hitting I think will be better, but I still think there's going to be games where it's it's just not there, and because of coming off last season where we know sometimes you know the hitting isn't great. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think once in a blue moon, we're going to have those games where, wow, the boys can't find the baseball. And so I think, yeah, I think six games as the highest winning streak this season. I, I think that's a fair number. I could I could see it being 12 and I could see it being four as well. But uh, I'm going to go with six. See, I have them going higher than that. I think I have them in double digits this year. I'm going to give them a 10. Okay. Uh, I think uh, I, I want to look at the schedule a little bit more eventually just to see like where this will happen. But knowing the Blue Jays, they win games that they're probably not supposed to win. And then they're going to lose against teams like the Boston Red Sox. They're going to lose the Detroit Tigers. Maybe they'll drop a few to the Kansas City Royals. It's going to be interesting. The Jays usually do find a way to lose games like that. So I think they're going to put it together a little bit more this season. We'll have a little bit more consistency and they'll get 10 wins at in a row at their best time in uh, regular season. The next one I want to get into, and maybe we'll, this will be the last one before we take our final break here. Um, who will take the biggest strides this season? So maybe not our necessarily our best player, but who is going to be, uh, it, I guess, the most improved player or the most um, or, or a young guy that's coming up that will that will take the scene? Most improved player. We've talked about Dalton Varsho a lot on this podcast. We've talked about how Alejandro Kirk has been in spring training you've talked about ernie clement kevin biggio there's a few guys that come into mind for me maybe you have george springer there as well but i think this is going to be my first cop-out answer i gotta go with dalton varsho i've been on the dalton varsho train pretty much since the start of spring training as, as soon as i heard that andre mans and Guillermo martinez were going out to his hometown where there's literally like 200 people living there and how serious he was taking this offseason i bought into the hype i'm all in on dalton varsho I think he had 286 this season in OPS, around 850. Pretty good in spring training. His contact looks way better. He's getting the bat to the ball. I'm all in on Dalton Varsho. I think he's going to have a big season. I had my bold prediction as him hitting 30 home runs, 20 stolen bases. I see a huge positive regression for him. A little bit of a down year last season. I'm all in on Dalton Varsho. I like that answer. Uh, I don't. I, yeah, I think a little bit of a cop-out, but I'll take it. Um, I, I think there's a couple of guys that are going to have big rebound seasons. Dalton Varsho, Alejandro Kirk, and Vladdy are my top three. Um, I, I would say it's going to be the most impactful uh, resurgence will be Vlad, just because I think if he can get up to back to you know somewhat home run numbers, as we talked about last episode, uh, I think that'll be definitely the most impactful. But uh, I, I respect the Dalton Varsho answers. I'm all in on the hype as well. Yeah, I mean, it's there's a lot of question marks on this Toronto Blue Jays, like especially their batting order. Really, the season comes down to can Dalton Varsho, Alejandro Kirk, George Springer, or Vladdy, hopefully all of them, have better seasons at the plate. doesn't matter who you surround your core guys with. If they're not going to hit, their top players are not going to hit the baseball, you're not going to win games. It doesn't matter. We could have got Shohei Otani. If you don't get production from Kirk, Vlad, Springer, you name it, it's not going to matter anyway. So I think this season really bases on the hinges of these guys actually performing up to their standard and having better hitting seasons from the plate. I like that a lot. Uh, we are going to get into a couple more when we come back, but we're going to take one more break.
This episode is brought to you by Game Time. I know when we went uh, to the Jets game, sat four rows up. I was even looking at Blue Jays tickets on Game Time already because why not? Uh, you know, plan a. You know, I'm planning to head out there. Uh, you know, at least for a bit and to try to catch a couple games. Uh, and Game Time is the best place to do that. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, theater events near you, with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guaranteed. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Uh, you know, they have the last minute tickets, the flash deals, uh, the zone deals as well, where a certain zone goes up and or goes down in price. And it, it's just a great sort of if you've got your eye on a ticket, it's like, oh, well, I can go actually in this zone and get a ticket for even cheaper. It's fantastic. Uh, so game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy. So you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total upfront. So, you know when you're getting a great deal before you check out. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event as well, which is huge. And even an hour after the event starts, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. All right, Carter. So what's another one you got for me? I think what we got like four questions, big questions left. What do you got for me to kick off segment three? And this one is about our ace, Kevin Gosman, obviously known for his strikeout numbers, always among the, among the top league leaders in that category. But I want you to put a number on it. How many strikeouts is Kevin Gosman going to get this season? I believe he had 237 last season. Yeah, well, um, I think it's going to be a big year for Kevin Gosman again. And I mean, if we have him winning a Cy Young, I think uh, I'm going to go with a solid number of 243. I think he's going to outperform his season last year. Maybe not, you know, out the blow it out of the water, but a few more. And I think that if he doesn't struggle with any injuries this season, that's going to help him out as well, getting more games. Um, so, yeah, I think 243 is a solid number for him. I have him going a little bit lower in strikeouts from last season, even though I still do have him as a Cy Young winner. I just think he's going to take the more of a Jose Barrios and Chris Bassett approach, maybe get a little bit more length, not having to throw as many pitches with striking people out. Because it is nice when you can do a three pitch strikeout, but often in the MLB that doesn't happen. These strikeouts do end up taking five, six, seven pitches. Whereas you get Jose Barrios and Chris Bassett, they can get a one pitch ground ball. So I'm hoping that Kevin Gosman can go that route a little bit and save some of his pitch totals and his arm. So I'm going to say 219. There is a little bit of a drop off there, but it's still great numbers. I mean, if Kevin Gosman can strike out over 200 people, I'm not going to complain whatsoever. So I have Kevin Gosman at 219, probably good enough for third place in the league. Spencer Strider is ridiculous. He's probably going to be lead leader again. And then I don't really have a, like a, num a name for number two, but I just think someone in the uh, in the realm will probably go back up there. Maybe Sandy Alcantara, maybe Blake Snell, one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I don't hate that number. I, I get where you're coming from. Um, I mean, that would be ideal, I think, in the sense of saving his arm, getting more innings. But I just think the way Kevin Gosman's pitching, nothing's going to switch up for him. I think the way he pitches has worked, and I think that he's going to keep on that route. But we'll have to wait and see. Of course, with all of these questions, we can give you our answers and, and the justification, but we'll have to see what the, uh, the players want to bring to the table as well. Uh, the, the one question I have is regarding pitching as well. In the bullpen, who can you see being a standout this season? Maybe an unexpected standout is what I should say. Unexpected standout. I don't think like I, it will be unexpected, but it shouldn't be. I think this guy's kind of been forgotten by Jays fans and it's due to injuries, stuff like that. But it's Chad Green. Chad Green's coming back off of a season where he had Tommy John struggled a little bit in this, this at the start. I know his first start was really bad, but he hasn't pitched in a year. You can't really blame him for that. He looked better down the stretch in the, in October. He looked unbelievable. He's been okay so far as in spring training, but I think especially early on when you have Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano out, we're going to see how much guys like Yimmy Garcia was the guy I was debating on with that question. It was probably my number two, but Chad Green and another guy, those two and Tim Meza, they're really going to rely on these three players, especially at the start of the season. I think Chad Green with a full spring training under his belt, get that regular routine that he can get back into. I think he's going to have a great season, probably around a three, five ERA, maybe even a little bit lower than that. I'm definitely taking that for when you get Eric Swanson and Jordan Romano back. This guy is debatably still the fourth or third best starter on this team 
which is ridiculous considering how good Chad Green is. But I think he's going to be a huge bounce back candidate for this Toronto Blue Jays team. I 100% agree. That was my pick was Chad Green. And I think maybe it is the easy answer, but I think outside of Blue Jays fans, he doesn't give it, get a ton of love. Um, and a guy that I think works hard and, and does the job. He just comes in and does his part. And, and that's exactly what this team needs. And he brings it. Um, the other guy for me was Tim Meza. Uh, just that's in the fact that too. because he doesn't get any kind of love. If anything, he gets way more hate than he deserves uh, for being just a solid arm out of this pen. And he's been doing it the past couple of years. Um, so, yeah, another guy, another unexpected standout that I could see maybe starting to get the love this season. Well, and you have Yariel Rodriguez, too, who's going to start yeah. in AAA, came out today, which is good for him, good for the development. This You could see huge strides in this guy's performances as well. Hasn't pitched in a while. Nice to get that routine under his belt as well. I think he can be very effective down the stretch as well. There's so many good pieces in this bullpen. It's going to be so fun to watch. As we can just actually score runs this season and give our starting pitcher some run support, if we're up two, three runs in the sixth inning, I'm going to feel really good about winning that game down the stretch. For sure. And I think it came out, um, there was a post from MLB of like the top 10 bullpens in the league. And the Jays ranked number tied for number 10th. And I think that wow. is criminally underrating our bullpen. Um, I think it's top the top five, debatably top three in this league. And uh, again, it's it's the Toronto not necessarily getting the love that they deserve um, in, in the MLB. And that's, I mean, that's been a thing for for many years so far. Uh, but I think going forward, maybe this year is the year that we, you know, the bullpen starts to prove people wrong. And I think that also comes with the bats a little bit because we weren't being able to win a ton of those games because of the bats not being hot. Um, if, if the bats can show up and get us those wins, maybe that shines a light on how good this bullpen is. Oh, last year we said it multiple times. It'd be 2-1 at the end of like the fifth inning. We're like, this game's over. We're not scoring another run. There's no way. And it just... It, what would happen is we'd get bases loaded or to get like runners on first and second double play strikeout ground ball pop up just inefficient at bats with runners in scoring position throughout the entirety of the year last year was one of the most frustrating years for me personally as jay's fan watching this team play because at least in 2021 bullpen was pretty bad to say the least you had adam simber as like your setup man not a good situation to be in but at least if you got down eight two in like the fourth inning you had a chance of rallying back and it was, it was so fun to watch. You get some of these like late inning comebacks. Like we were just talking about our favorite moments in baseball is the late inning comebacks. You don't get that from this team at all. So hopefully the bats can arise this season, be more productive because if we have another season like last year, it's going to get tough to watch the games down the stretch. But this takes me into my last question and it is going to be about the AL East because the Toronto Blue Jays struggled immensely last season in the AL East did kind of save their record a little bit, I guess you could say, with the Yankees and the Rays in those last couple weeks of the season. Still only went 21-31 and 31 in the division. That's not going to fly. They're going to need to be better this season. But saying that, the AL East is very tough. Which team do you see giving the Toronto Blue Jays the hardest time playing against? Maybe we just can't seem to win games against them. Which team do you have that being in the AL East for the Blue Jays? I think that's an easy answer, to be honest with you. And I think that's the Baltimore Orioles. I think that they are just a very, very strong team. Good pitching, good hitting. It's they're an overall beast. And I think that the Yankees, I said the Yankees will have a better season than the Orioles. But I think with the Jays pitching staff, they will have an easier time against, um, you know, the power hitting Yankees instead of the average, uh, for average hitting Orioles. The guys that gets runners on, that punches them in, not necessarily the biggest swings, the biggest names. Um, but yeah, I think they'll definitely have a tough time against the Orioles. Not necessary, and, and not not taking anything away from the Yankees either. Their 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 lineup is very good as well. But I think it's more of a boomer bust type of thing. And with our pitching staff, I think that's easier to face than the Baltimore Orioles, who are going to hit for for average. Yeah, the Yankees and the Orioles are definitely interesting. They're de two di different uh, built. They're very differently built lineups. With the Orioles, you get a little bit more consistency through the lineup. It's a lot more deep. For me, you can see the Yankees. There's Juan Soto. Aaron Judge, those are the main two I'm worried about. Claver Torres can do some damage. You got Anthony Rizzo, some guys that can do it. You look at the Orioles, I'm scared of Ryan Mountcastle, the Jays killer. For some reason, he turns into Barry Bonds every single time we play him. Then they have guys like just um, Jackson Holiday, who's not even starting in the major leagues somehow. Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, Anthony Santander is another guy, seems to kill the Jays. 
but I'm actually not picking either of these teams. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Rays because wow. for some reason, those are the stingiest games of all time. And it's because Tampa Bay Rays always find these random pitchers from the bullpen that turn into the greatest pitchers of all time. They have so much depth. They have random players that all of a sudden just turn into like MLB stars. It seems like every year, and it always feels like the Blue Jays win, lose games against the Rays that they always should win. Seems like Randy Rose and Arena is always hitting like a bomb at late in the innings. Isak Paredes had a ridiculous year against the Jays last season. There's so many guys on the Rays that just you know, like most fans don't really hear about unless you're a fan of the AL East. The Rays are one of the most underrated teams in the league, and I think that's going to give the Jays a little bit of trouble this upcoming season. I don't hate that at all. And that sort of goes back to my point with the Orioles, of, of a team that hits for average, can punch in guys that are good at scoring runs, and can pitch. That I think the Orioles and the Rays are built very similar. I just think, personally, the Orioles have some bigger names and some, you know, just better players overall, I hate to say. Um, that's why I picked the Orioles, but, it's, but we, we're thinking at least in the same vein of, the team that's going to hit for average and, and kill you that way, maybe not necessarily just hitting long balls on you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be like the better team that's going to give the Blue Jays a harder time for sure. against the ta- uh, sorry the Atlanta Braves. We've had a lot of success against the Braves in the last seasons. We swept them last season three in a row. At, uh, going, I think the last time they beat us is like 2021. It's been a long time, and obviously the Braves are one of the best teams in the league. Should have swept the Dodgers last season. Kind of got screwed over in that second game when we played them. So I don't think it's a meaning of talent. I just think it's, it's just the stinginess. It's just, it's random. Like the way the Tampa Bay Bay Rays play baseball is they manufacture runs. They'll get a single, they'll get them to steal second. And then they're quick enough that they'll get like a bloop single and they'll get that running like that. And they're pitching so good. It's always tough for the Toronto Blue Jays with how bad their hitting is to actually score runs against the Tampa Bay Rays bullpen and starting pitching. Yeah. Uh, for the final question, this is sort of going to lead us into tomorrow's episode as we will be previewing the whole first series. We'll be previewing opening day. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a ton of fun. But Carter, will the Jays take series number one? I think, unfortunately, they're going to split the series. It's going to be 2-2. They're not going to come out of it doing any better than they were. But I think we're going to take that for opening day, the opening day week, the opening day series. You don't have your ace pitching. I think the bats will take a little bit to get going. I think they'll, they're going to win opening day because the Blue Jays somehow just win opening day all the time. And then I think they're going to lose the Brios uh, performance in that game. I don't want to get into my the rest of my predictions yeah, because yeah, we'll we're going tomorrow. into this tomorrow. But yeah, I do think it's going to be a 2-2 split. I like that a lot. We want to thank you guys as always for watching. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button as we will be here every day. And if you're watching us already, you might as well subscribe. It helps us out a ton uh, and puts us right at the top of your YouTube page so you guys can see us quickly. Also, check us out on Twitter, Braden 5 Wasco, Carter First 2, as well as our TikTok and Instagram page, Locked on Blue Jays. Uh, and we're going to start, you know, coming up with shorts and stuff like that throughout the season. So, uh, you know, if it's quick information that we want to get to you guys that maybe we don't, you know, there's no point of throwing into the episode or it's something that comes out after. Uh, yeah, we'll make sure we get all that information to you guys. Uh, but we do want to throw it one more time to the streaming service as well. Also, sorry, I forgot to mention this Thursday after last pitch, we will be going live on YouTube. So check us out. We'll have a ton of content there for you guys as well. Yeah, we just have the opportunity to throw it to our 24-7 streaming channel. We always go over this. The NBA is going on. NHL playoffs around the corner. MLB season starts tomorrow. So many good opportunities for you guys to check out some sports from our experts at Locked On. Let's go to Locked On Sports Today channel on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national 24-7 streaming channel. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Baseball is finally back tomorrow. So excited. Don't have any more days without baseball. 162 games, long season down the stretch. A lot of things can happen. I'm excited for the up and down of the Blue Jays season.